Hello everyone. Welcome to video 7 of chapter 5. In this video, we continue the example um, we had in the previous video. We now consider the case where um, you change ci and uh, the xi is a basic variable. The discussion here will be quite different. Okay, so in the previous example, um, we know that x4 is a basic variable. So let's choose C4 and let's say we want to make some change. And let's say C4 initially is negative 15 and let's say we want to change by the amount lambda. So C4 is now negative 15 plus lambda in bracket. Okay. With this change, then we would change also um, this uh, um, vector CB. So let's write out. So the computation of the C star, the final tableau coefficient, is C minus CB times A star. And uh, what is the C here? Okay, so the he, he, C here is this vector, and, and the C4 is changed into negative 15 minus lambda, and 0, 0 here, minus and this is the CB, and then because um, um, X4 is a basic variable, this one enters, so I also get negative 15 minus lambda here, minus 4. So that's CB, and then A star. Okay, so um, let's break this up into two parts. So I would break this vector here, write it into two vectors. One takes negative 15 and I put the negative lambda into a separate one. Okay, So if I neglected the terms containing lambda, same thing here, then I have this term is this vector remove lambda and then this vector remove lambda, this term times a star. Okay, And I write this in blue. And then you know that is the computation that you have done. That is the computation where you make no change. And then the part affected by the change in lambda is, um, so from here we'll have a, a, a vector which has negative lambda in this position, but zero everywhere else. And then here we have a negative lambda with a negative sign with become a positive lambda zero times a star. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so since this computation is um, just uh, um, the same as you did not make the change, then this um, exactly becomes um, what you have in the tableau. So I just take that from the tableau and then we calculate this, you put in the A star, you calculate this into a vector and add this on top of that. If you carry out, there's some details I'm skipping here. If you do that, the black part gives you this black vector. Okay? So you see that um, the changes in lambda appears here. Okay, and then we can add them out term by term. So 3 will be adding here, so 3 minus 2 lambda, and 0 with 0 get me 0, and then 2, 5 lambda give me this term, and then I get a 0 term, and the next is 2 plus 2 lambda gives me here, and the last one is 1 minus lambda. So I get this C star vector. And if I want to keep the final tableau final, that means uh, um, satisfy the criterion for optimality, then the C star must be non-negative, which means each element here must be non-negative. Okay, So these zero ones are obviously non-negative, but these terms containing lambda would have, have conditions. Okay, so let's list all these four terms they are here and we would require all of them to be bigger than or equal to zero okay then we can um, go through each inequality 
and write out the constraint on lambda. So, for example, the first one, you can move two lambda to the right hand side, divide both sides by two, you get lambda less than 1.5. Okay, you can go through the rest and then you get um, these uh, conditions. So, this means all of these four must be satisfied. Okay, so look at the less than sign. Lambda less than 1.5, lambda then less than 1 must be satisfied, both. And then you conclude lambda has to be less than 1. And then here, lambda is bigger than negative 0 0.5, lambda is bigger than negative 1. Then you conclude lambda must be bigger than negative 0 0.4. So finally, we conclude that um, if you want C star to be non-negative, lambda must lie between negative 0 0.4 and 1. Okay, so as long as lambda is in that range, then C star is non-negative and the tableau is still the final tableau, so the optimal solution point is unchanged. So this X star is still optimal. Okay, and then we can that in and find out um, the optimal value, the new z max value. Put it in um, 4 and 6 um, multiply by 4 is multiplied by 4, that's c2, and then c4 multiplied by 6, c4 is 15 plus lambda. And if you work this out, and you get 106 plus 6 lambda. Okay, so um, 106 was the previous optimal value and uh, um, if you don't add lambda that's your optimal and if you add a lambda and you see that six times lambda enters the expression so this means six is kind of the rate how it responds to the change in lambda if you change one unit in lambda it will cause a six unit change in the Z max value. So um, the other um, basic variable is X2 and uh, we can apply a totally similar analysis to C2, which is the coefficient of X2. Okay, so let's do a summary of uh, the discussions we have had. Okay, so if we are now changing one coefficient to ci, and we change it into ci plus lambda, what happens to the solution? Well, it depends. First case, if xi is not a basic variable in the final tableau, then two parts of discussion here. So we know that z not star, the optimal value is not affected as long as the change will not change the sign of C star. Okay. And once you have that, and then you can find the allowed range of change for lambda by computing the CI star in this expression and require it to be bigger than zero that will give you the range. Okay, and the second case here, if xi is a basic variable in the final tableau, then there's a different procedure. Then we know the optimal value will be changed, and the optimal value will be um, a c star times x star. And then how to find C star? Well, um, we also would require C star to be positive, not negative, for this to remain optimal, right? So we can find the allowed range of change by C star equal, again, computed by this expression, to be bigger than zero. So from the example, we know that we have to be pay attention that here we actually have a system of inequalities there are several constraints occur here and they all need to be 
satisfied. You need to find the um, kind of the intersection of uh, all these inequalities. And okay, so um, that is it. Um, this is the end of this subchapter discussing the effect of the um, objective coefficient, objective function coefficient. And uh, I want to say there are other examples in the textbook, and please um, read them so to reinforce your knowledge on this topic. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.